Hi everybody, Mr. Bowman here. In this video here, we're going through all the merit questions from the 2021 Algebra or MCAT exam. Let's get straight into it. So question number 28. Find the possible values of M and N that will make this equal to this. Um, and we've been told a little bit more down the bottom that they are both positive numbers. So this one here, I suspect going to be quite tricky. Um, what we've got over here is we've got the factorized form and we've got the expanded form over here. So my initial view is I'm probably going to expand this to see how that can relate to that. So let's start off with by doing that. So we've got 2x plus m squared. I'm going to start off by writing that as the double bracket. So 2x plus m, and then we've got another bracket of the same thing, 2x plus m. I'm now going to expand. I'm going to start off with by doing 2x times 2x. That's 4x squared. Then we've got 2x times m. So that's going to be 2mx. I'm going to have another one of those, 2mx over there. And then finally, I've got an m squared to finish it off. I can simplify this by grouping the middle ones. I've got 4mx there. So that's going to be 4x squared plus 2m. X, oh sorry, 4mx that is, and then I've got plus m squared. So now what we're doing is we, we do need to compare that to the other equation. So I know that 4x squared plus 4mx plus m squared is equal to 4x squared plus nx plus 9. So I've got this side here is equal to this side here. Um, and what we're going to do is we're just going to make some comparisons. So I know that 4x is going to match up with this 4x. So they relate to each other. They're the equivalents. The 4mx in the middle, that's going to be the same as nx. And finally, I know the m squared here is going to be the same as that one over there. So the um, the m squared and the 9, we can actually figure that out straight away because we know that m squared must be equal to 9. So m is equal to the square root of 9 and m is equal to positive 3. Noting I'm going to ignore negative 3 because the question told me to ignore the negative one. And I'm just going to write a little note, m cannot equal negative 3 in this case. Um, but you didn't need to write that if you don't want to. So now that I know m, I also know that 4m is going to be equal to n. So n will be equal to 4m. And we know that m is 3, so I'm going to substitute that in over there. So m is going to be, or sorry, n is going to be equal to 4 times 3, which will be equal to 12. And just like that, I've got my two answers. m is equal to 3 and n is equal to 12. I'm now on to question number 29. And simply said, it says solve this inequality. Um, so let's start off with by jotting down the question. So I've got 3x plus 2, 2x minus 1. And then we've got our inequality sign. And we've got 6x plus 1. And then we've got x minus 3. So the first thing I want to note is this inequality sign here, it makes it look a little bit different. It makes it look a little bit messy. But exact same as an equal sign except if you're dividing by a negative number. So for example, negative three. That's the only time it's different when you're dividing by a negative number. Um, hopefully we don't get one of those, but let's have a look. So first step, um, well, all the x's, there's four of them, they're all locked away in brackets. So my initial step is gonna be expanding all these brackets. So let's start off with by, I call it the rainbow method. So we've got six x squared minus three x, and then we've got plus 4x, and then we've got minus 2. And we've got our inequality sign. We're going to do the same here, 6x squared. Just noting, I quite like that because I've got a 6x squared on both sides. So they're actually going to just cancel each other out. So it won't even be a quadratic at the end. Um, so that becomes minus 18x. And then down the bottom, we've got plus x. And then we've got minus 3. So let's simplify all the middle parts of these quadratics. So we've got 6x squared, we've got plus x minus 2, inequality sign, 
6x squared minus 17x minus 3. So I'm going to start by cancelling out the x or 6x squareds. So we've got x minus 2, um, negative 17x minus 3. I've got x's on both sides, so I'm going to eliminate the smallest of them, which is going to be negative 17. So I'm going to go plus 17x to both sides. So we've got 18x minus 2, inequality sign, minus 3. And then I'm going to go plus 2, plus 2. So 18x, negative 1. And then finally, I'm going to go divide by 18. Notice I am dividing, but it's not negative, so I don't have to worry about um, any tricks. So x, negative 1 over 18. We are now on to question number 30, and we've got a really nice simple one. Solve this. Um, I actually should note the questions we've had here, um, normally in the MCAT they're a bit more wordy. Um, this, this particular exam was, I think, a COVID year, so maybe it was made a bit nicer for them. So let's drop down our equation. We've got x plus 2 over 3 minus 2x minus 1 over 5, and all of that is equal to 1. So my first step is to recognize I've got these invisible brackets sitting along the numerator of my fraction, so I can't really get to those x's until I've merged these two fractions into one simpler fraction. And because it is subtraction, I'm going to use the crisscross smiley face method. So I'm going to start off with the bottom. Bottom times bottom is 15. I'm then going to do my first cross, so that's going to be 5 brackets x plus 2. And then I'm going to do my next one. So just a reminder, that's negative 3. And then we've got 2x minus 1. All of that is equal to 1. I'm now going to expand my top part, and I do want to be really careful because that minus 3 there actually is going to have quite a big impact. So we've got 5 times x, so that's going to be 5x. 5 times 2, that's going to be positive 10, so I'm going to do plus 10. We've got negative 3 times 2x, that's minus 6x. And then negative times negative, that's going to become plus 3. All of that is over 15, which is equal to 1. I'm now going to simplify the denominator, or the numerator, apologies. So we've got minus x, because we've got 5x minus 6 of them, leaving us in the negative. And I've got 10 plus 3, that gets me to 13. Oh, forgive me. I'm not sure what I'm doing there. 13, and that's over 15 equals 1. I'm now going to get rid of the division, so times 15 to both sides will help me do that. So that'll be negative x plus 13, and that will be equal to 15. I'm then going to go minus 13 to both sides, and I've got negative x equals 2. And I'm going to, oh, this here, this negative sign is kind of like a times negative 1. So I can just move that negative sign over to the other side, which would have been the same as dividing by negative 1, but we didn't do that. So negative 2 is the answer. Hopefully you got that as well. We are now on to question 31. And this one here is a bit tricky because the unknown is actually in the power now. So it's going to be a bit messy. So this is an example of an exponential equation. Let's start by jotting down my equation to make my working a bit easier. So I've got 2x times 2 to the power of 3x minus 8, and that there is equal to 16. So the first thing I've noticed, I've got the base of 2s, and I know 16 because we've got 2, 4, 8, 16. So 16 will be 2 to the power of 4. So I can change this to also have a power of 2. So let's do that as my first step. So I've got 2 times 2 to the power of 3x minus 8, and that is equal to 2 to the power of 4. And I just realized I forgot that x there. Um, just to recap, when you're adding things together, for example, x squared times x cubed, we add the powers together, right? And that gets us to x to the power of 5. So even though it looks a bit messier, we need to do the same here. So we can simplify the stuff on the left-hand side by adding x and 3x minus 8 together. So that means we're going to have a base of 2, and that will become 4x, because we've got 1x plus 3x's, minus 8, and that will be equal to 2 to the power of 4. Now that we've got the base number of 2 on both sides, we can actually cancel those out, leaving the powers. So that's going to be 4x minus 8 is equal to 4. 
This here is a good old fashioned year nine, year 10 linear algebra question. So we're gonna go plus eight to both sides. So that means four X will be equal to 12. I'm then gonna go divide by four to both sides. And that gives me my answer, X is equal to three. Our final question for this video, question number 32, down the bottom, simplify, so a bit different because we've been doing a lot of solving here, and simplify that mess. Um, so let's start off by jotting that mess down. We've got 2x squared minus 3x minus 14. All of that is over 2x squared minus 8. So this is going to be pretty messy because up the top, we're going to have to use the grouping method. And down the bottom, um, there's a common factor there as well. So let's start off by simplifying the top first. And I'm just going to do it down here. Um, to make my working a bit nicer. So I've got 2x squared minus 3x minus 14. Um, so we can start by multiplying 2 and negative 14, which gets us to negative 28. We now need to think what adds to this, or sorry, what multiplies to this negative 28 and adds to that positive 3. And hopefully you're thinking negative 7 and positive 4. So that there is going to be equal to 2x squared minus, oh gosh, I started writing a 4, but minus 7x, and that represents the 7 identified. And then I'm going to go plus 4x, that represents the positive 4 over there, and we've got minus 14. I'm now going to factorize the first group, and then I'll factorize the second group. Hopefully I've got that common bracket. Um, so don't forget we're single bracket factorizing here. These two here, they've only got an x in common because 2 and 7 are both prime numbers. Um, and that will leave me with 2x over here because I would have done divide by x, divide by x. Negative 7x divided by x would be negative 7. So there's my first bracket. If I did the same again to the next side, I should get the exact same bracket if I've done it right. If I haven't done it right, you've had a bit of a nightmare, you need to have another look. So common factors here looks like a 2. So I'm going to go plus 2, and that's because there's a plus sign in front of the 4. Um, and I need to divide both parts by 2. So it's going to get me to 2x minus 7. And I really like that because it matches my first bracket. And my factorizing, when it comes to the end, that's going to be 2x minus 7 because that's the common bracket. And the leftovers, x and plus 2 they are going to form my second bracket. So there you go, there's my x plus 2. So I'm now going to write that above here. So that's 2x minus 7, x plus 2. Over, and I now need to do my best simplifying the denominator, which is 2x minus, 2x squared minus 8. And I'm going to do this up the top here, just because I'm running low on room. Um, as I said before, they've got a common factor of 2, so that's going to get me x squared minus 4. And I'm really liking this because that is a difference between two squares example. So x squared is a square, 4 is a square, and minus sign, difference. So we've got difference between two squares. The square root of x squared is equal to x, and the square root of 4 is equal to 2. So that will help me form my brackets. So I'm going to have 2 bracket x minus 2, and then x plus 2 which will now sit over here, down here on the bottom. I've switched them around by mistake, but there we go. I've now got a common bracket, x plus 2, x plus 2 can cancel each other out, leaving me with what I think is going to be my final answer, 2x minus 7 over 2 bracket x minus 2. Um, doesn't look like there's any, any way to simplify that because we can't factorize the top there. So that wraps up the merit questions from the 2021 MCAT algebra exam. Hopefully you found them all useful. Keep an eye out for the next video.